Today William and I are fortunate enough to drive the current Porsche 911 collector's item, the much coveted Sport Classic. Yes, if you follow any Porsche social media over the last six months, you might have noticed the Sport Classic whoring itself like an 80s pinup girl. Everyone has been wetting their pants over this model. Maybe it's because of the ducktail spoiler, but most likely the unlikely combination of the turbo 3.7 liter engine with rear wheel drive and a manual transmission. What could be better? Well, before we get started, I'd like to thank my friend Joe for once again letting me leave my sweaty stench all over his new car. To be fair, Joe took a leap of faith here, being that I'd said a few disparaging things about the Sport Classic previously. So, thank you my friend. Anyway, the Sport Classic is not just a big engine and a stick shift. There are many unique tweaks to set it aside from other 911 models. Most notable, of course, is that ducktail spoiler, the beautiful rims, but also the parallel hood inserts that run all the way up to the double bubble roof line, historic badge colouring, and of course the genuine gold plated badging. Inside the Cognac Heritage design interior, green dials of course, and even a Sport Classic only roof lining, the polka dots. So on to the important part, how does it perform? Being that it has the same mighty engine as the Turbo S, it must be a beast right? Well, actually no, it performs more like a Carrera S or GTS. And the reason for this is that 7-speed manual transmission. Instead of sourcing a unit that was just for this model's very limited run, Porsche simply used the existing transmission out of the Carrera models, which limits the torque to a mere 440 pounds-feet, a considerable reduction from the near 600 pounds-feet this engine normally outputs. And I have noticed a few people asking, why didn't they just use the excellent 6-speed transmission from the GT3? Well, the reason is simple. That transmission is designed to handle even less power at 360 pounds-feet. So the Carrera 7-speed is the best Porsche had on hand. While the Sport Classic, on paper at least, shows an impressive 70 horsepower bump over the GTS, for example, the Sport Classic is still a lot heavier than the GTS, and the real world difference in power between these two models is actually only around 20 horsepower because the GTS power has been understated and so it's closer to 520 horsepower. Evidence of this is also shown in Porsche's own performance numbers with the 0 to 60 times and top speeds being almost exactly the same between the GTS and the Sport Classic. Certainly from behind the wheel the Sport Classic is different to drive than the GTS but certainly doesn't feel any faster. Which brings me to the big difference you feel behind the wheel of the Sport Classic. It delivers power unlike any other 911, and the reason for this is that torque limit. If you look at the torque graphs for the Turbo S, the Sport Classic, a GTS, and just for kicks, a GT3, you'll notice that one of these things is not like the others. Yes, the Sport Classic hits its maximum torque earlier than any other 911, but then stays completely flat all the way up to 6000 RPM has a very unique power delivery within the 911 range. It gets up on power once it's in boost, early, and then stays at the same torque level all the way through the rev range. Almost like an EV in a way. That is, bumps up the torque and then it's flat like a table and then down at the end. Every other Porsche has more of a lump in their torque curve. That is, in the Turbo and the Turbo S, you feel this surge of power right in the middle of the rev range, So, because the torque curve is like this. Whereas this car, I pop it down a gear, slow down a bit, and then jump on the power. It's on the power, it's on the power. It's perfectly flat though. You don't feel more power as you get up the rev range. And with a three liter turbo in the ST GTS, it's also a lump. And of course, with the naturally aspirated engines, it's, it's a hill. As you go up the rev range, you gather more torque. So the Sport Classic is very unique in its delivery of power. Yes, so as that guy just said, the Sport Classic delivers power more like a Taycan than a Turbo 911. 
The other noticeable difference is turbo lag, which is almost entirely missing in the 3 litre turbo engines, but is quite noticeable in this engine with up to a second of lag time, which is actually quite reminiscent of its spiritual success of the 930. What about the other driving dynamics? For those of you that watched Harry's Garage excellent video on the Sport Classic a few weeks ago, you might have noticed a couple of comments at the end. Firstly, he felt that the 3.7 litre engine does not sound as good as the 3 litre in the GTS. Let's quickly compare. Yes, that 3.7 litre engine has always had a more muffled tone. And secondly, he noted that for half the price, you can buy a GTS which is 90% as good. I question this, is the GTS actually 90% as good as the Sport Classic or is it better? Let's go down the list. Firstly, the Sport Classic is not any faster than a GTS, it does not rev any higher, it does not sound any better, doesn't handle as well, it is heavier and has a noticeable turbo lag. However, there are three areas where the Sport Classic reigns supreme. Firstly, it's unique design. There's no doubt the Sport Classic brings the waterfowl styling back to the 911 range. Secondly, it's novel driving dynamics. It really is unlike any other 911 model. And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, this model for the lucky few to be in a position to purchase is limited to 1,250 units, which means owners are unlikely to ever lose a dollar on their investments. So there you have it, the Sport Classic. It is fabulous, but at almost $300,000, it is by far the most expensive new 911 on the market. Is it really worth it? I will be interested to know what you guys think. Anyway, thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.